You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Get ready to find hope. Get ready to be inspired. Get ready to discover your full potential. Get ready for total success. From the Total Success Coach, Princess Bola Adelani. Welcome to Inspired Success. I'm Jacqueline Vosell. You're probably wondering, where's Princess Bola? I'm not her. No, we don't look alike. We have some things in common, but we're about to find out a lot more about Princess Bola. This time, she is in the hot seat. I'm tired of hearing her giving us all this fabulous knowledge and information. I want to know about her. She's always investing in other people. It's time we're going to flip the script and we're going to focus on Princess Bola. Welcome. Are you ready? <laughs> yes, Welcome I am. to your own show. I know. It's <laughs> How funny. does it feel being on the other side? <laughs> funny. I'm funny. Like, funny. For want of a better word. Yeah, funny. Just That's funny. all I can say. But um, yes, it's great to be on my yeah. show. We finally get to know Inspired more about you. Inspired success. Absolutely. I'm really delighted about this um, show today because for once I'll have the opportunity to really share my story. Mm -hmm you know, my life story and what drives me, the why behind what I do, mm. why I am so impassioned, why I'm passionate about women empowerment and the full extent of my vision. So it's really exciting that, um, you know, the tables kind of uh, have been turned and that um, you're here sitting with me, a guru, I must yeah. say as well, well you, you know, um, a great TV personality, with a lot of history and experience that I would ask viewers to go to your website to learn more because everybody's trying to find out, probably thinking who is she and what have you. But um, you could go to JacquelineVosell.com. It's JacquelineVosell.com to learn more about Jacqueline, who's, um, you know, having given me this privilege and opportunity to share my story with her. See, she's still focusing on <laughs> everyone else but herself. We're going to get back to you. Yes. All right. Okay. Before we get into all the deep information that everybody wants to know, I want to know personally, are you a real princess? <laughs> princess Bola. And I know everybody else wants to know the same thing. I know. I, got, I get that question a lot. I get that question a lot. It's the million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I get paid? <laughs> And I often don't answer the question. I often drive people to my website. But this time, today, mm -hmm. I will answer the question. And, you know, when, when people ask me, are you a real princess? You know, what's all that about? My response is, are there fake ones, you know? <laughs> <Tell> oh, <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> Tell me about the fake princesses. You know right. what I mean? You either are like or you're that. not. And then they say, oh, you know, is it just a self-styled um, title right. like Queen? Latifah, okay, for example, right. and I'll be like, you know, I, I couldn't really literally rap to save my life. So <laughs> <laughs> forget that. It's uh -huh. nothing like that. Yes, I am a true, authentic princess in two ways, in two ways. In one way, spiritually, Love which it. I share with millions of others around the world as the daughter of Jesus Christ, Amen. who is the King of Kings and the King Lord of Kings. Lords. And then, of course, yes, the natural one, the biological one, which most people want to know and are interested in. Unfortunately, I think sometimes, <laughs> even from people who are themselves royalty spiritually, mm -hmm. you know, they think, oh, okay, yeah, 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 well, tell us, but are you a real one as far as on this side on this of eternity? Earth, yeah. Yes, exactly. I am. My paternal grandfather was the crown prince of our, our, our town 
in, in the southwestern part of Nigeria, wow. where I come from. And actually, my uncle, my dad's younger brother, is the current king of that town wow. of about, um, I would say, five million pe plus people. Yeah, so that, that's where that comes from. So you grew up in Nigeria. You were born in Nigeria. I was born in tell Lagos, us, Nigeria. Yeah, tell us yes. a little bit about your upbringing in your early childhood. Well, Lagos uh, is a cosmopolitan city. Mm -hmm. um, you know, contrary to what some people think in, uh, in America, you know, Africa or, uh, you know, isn't yeah. this continent where people are jumping from trees to trees <laughs> and where everybody is starving Ignorant. and all hungry and in farming and you know so it's nothing like that it's um nigeria is the sixth largest oil producing nation in the world wow. lagos is the commercial capital they say of of africa the continent um so um yeah grew up um both my parents were you know educated in the mm -hmm. west you know and um so you really just grew up really like um a normal you know maybe suburban um, American girl. Now, did you have siblings? Were you an only child? Four siblings. Four wow. siblings. My mother had four of us. I'm the youngest of the four. Oh, the baby. The baby. The exactly, baby. Exactly. Exactly. The baby. That's where you get all the personality from. <laughs> the star was born. <laughs> exactly. And the pampering and, and what have you. So, yes, yeah, the baby of the family, two brothers, two older brothers, and an uh, older sister. She's the eldest. Now, did you have a close relationship with them? What was your relationship? Oh like? yes, um, my my brothers and my sister all went to boarding school, you know. And they the the my immediate older brother is four years older than me. Mm -hmm. So really, um, and they were in boarding school. So really, growing up, um, I was very attached to my mom because I was the only one at home, right. you know, growing up. But yeah, we're very close and um, yeah, I love them to death. Now all your, your siblings went to boarding school. Yes. You went to boarding school. Yes. Tell us about that. <laughs> I went to boarding school. I began my elementary education, obviously, in Lagos. Mm -hmm. You know, I was born there. And then um, at 15, um, the educational system is a little bit different in Nigeria. It, was, it is modeled after the British educational system because we're colonized by the British. Okay. So um, at 15, uh, which is kind of, I would say, um, junior high kind of, yeah. um, you know, school, yeah. I, yeah, I went to a boarding school in England to finish my senior high, oh. you know, high school. Yeah, I went to a boarding school in Northumberland, uh, which is northern part of England on the, on the border of England and Scotland. So what was um, that like, leaving what you've known to be home? I, and just yes it was it was hard um, for me it wasn't like too much of a culture shock because we used to travel right. often right. for vacation and all my other siblings were already in the UK and I had family in the UK but um, it was different being away from home mm. you know it wasn't so much the culture that was a shock it was just being away from my mom and being away you know by myself in in this little boarding school uh, you know, far away. But like I said, my siblings were around, they would call, and then I'll go home for vacation, and, mm. and what of you. And, yeah. and now you have your own family. Yes, you I do. Immigrate to the United States, you have your own family. Yes. The way you grew up, does that affect the dynamics of your family now? Did, did the way you grew up have any influence on your, your motherhood, you as a wife? Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think the culture is different, and mm -hmm. I think that... Um, you know, my children are, are, are blessed mm -hmm. because I think they get um, the exposure that I have from different cultures and continents, you know, and I can bring the good of each mm -hmm. one to the way I, I raise them. Like in my culture, we're very, you know, high on, on respect. Mm -hmm. You know, we value respect for our elders and... Can you, you bring know. some of that over here? <laughs> bring some of that over here. <laughs> you know, things like that are, are huge mm -hmm. with us. So I, that, that's a great emphasis in my home, for example. And so I, I get that a lot from people saying, wow, your kids are so polite. Mm. You know, the please, the thank you, the no thank you, the good evening, you know, yes, ma'am, that kind of thing. So, um, yes, absolutely, it does impact... Um, 
the way I, I, I raise my kids and how I, I, I kind of run my family and how I, I run my business even because mm. um, I think it's just sharpened my people's skills right. because of this exposure, this privilege that I've had to interact with mm. people of diverse backgrounds. You know, um, the college I went to in the UK was very, very extremely diverse. We had students from all over the world, literally, literally um, the University of Buckingham. So, you know, all of that just kind of it sharpened that that skill and that ability to interact and communicate with people of different backgrounds and, and kind of understand them and just kind of flow, flow easily with them. I like what you said. You, you took the good yes. from every place you've been. And if we could all learn to do that, can you imagine how much we would draw from all of our experiences? I, I, absolutely. I know. That's, that's I amazing. Know, I know. And, and we all have, of course, life-changing moments that are difficult and not so positive. Mm -hmm. And your mother passed at an early age. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I know that had to be extremely difficult because you were so close with her. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was 18. I was just 18, mm. so that was a critical time when I was kind of Transition. just transitioning into adulthood. And like I shared with you earlier, very attached to her. Mm. And um, she was just 51. She was oh. 51 when she passed. It was very sudden, so nothing kind of prepared us for it. You know, um, I was away in boarding school in England. I'd spoken to her, it was actually, I think, two weeks after her 51st birthday. So I'd spoken to her on her birthday. I'd called her and, you know, called to wish her happy birthday. And then a week or so later, I would call home. And they had been trying to get in contact with me because the telecommunications oh. system wasn't very good at that time. And um, they were like, oh, wow, you know, you need to come home right away and all of that. My ticket, everything had been bored and all of that. Um, your Did they mom tell is you sick. On the they phone? didn't tell me on the phone. Wow. Mom is ill and only to get home and um, discover that she had passed. She had been only sick for, for three days, you know. Oh, and um, it was sudden, like I said, it was a shock. It was, she meant the world to me. We were very close, very attached. And it was a defining moment. It was a moment where I began to have questions about life. Mm. You know, things that uh, your regular, normal 18-year-old wouldn't probably be thinking about that time. I had those deep philosophical questions. Um, where is she? Why am I here? Why do people come and build relationships and die? Is there life after death? You know, what's all of this about? And um, that's when I began my journey. I call it the journey in search of truth. Mm. and meaning and purpose because it just didn't make sense. Everything just seemed so futile and, and nothing matters at that point. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so that's where my journey began. And it was, like I said, a very critical time where a girl really needs a strong presence yeah. of a mentor, mother figure to mm. guide her through life, you know. And that was when I lost her. And so... Um, Going through all of that, a lot of road bumps and a lot of um, wrong choices, mm -hmm. really feeling totally lost, um, you know. So how, how did that affect you in, in your transition, essentially, to adulthood? Yes. Uh, and it, how did you get through it? I, I think that I, I was hurting at one time. I, I tried all the wrong things, you know. I, I, I was looking for that answer, yeah. that validation, that love, that affirmation that I needed at that time, that guidance. And like, you know, maybe most girls or most people would do at that age. Mm. I, I did all the wrong things, thinking I could fill it up with relationships right. and, and partying and, and all of that and did all of those kind of things. But still, he didn't, he didn't feel that whole, that that sense of mm, in, in, in I call me. it a vacuum. The it va just keeps yes. getting sucked out. Yeah, fill it with the meaningless stuff. Exactly, and then you know that whole process would take me into a place of spirituality mm -hmm. and faith, where you know um, I was, you know, Christ was presented to me as a loving father, mother, mm. savior, friend, mm. healer, sanctifier, and everything. 
And initially, you know, it didn't make sense. I didn't want to be one of those weirdos <laughs> and all of that. But <laughs> after a while, yeah, I thought, you know, let's, let me give this a try. I, I've, after all, I've tried everything else. Mm. And, and, and that's where my relationship moved from just being religious, going to church mm. as, as a young girl, because I was raised in church. We we're raised Anglican, e Episcopalian here. Mm -hmm. um, and we moved from that going through the motions to a relationship one-on-one -on -one where Jesus became personal to me, became mother, father, friend, lover, healer, and everything. And that was really the turning point. Mm -hmm. That was when that hole was filled and that healing process began for me. And uh, things started making more sense as I delved more into the word and understood why we're here you know, what the purpose is, what life is after death, and so on, then I, 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 I found the answer. So in the midst of all this figuring out who you are, how, you know, things can actually have meaning again, yes. tell us about your college career. Yes, and so I went into college. I went to university in England. Um, my actual working career actually began in, in the UK, too. First, when I was in boarding school, mm -hmm. working at a fast food joint. You know, students, you always want extra money. Your pocket <laughs> money is never enough. So that's where I actually began my working career um, in customer service and sales. Mm -hmm. at a, you know, huge... So you were always working with people. <laughs> yes, an upscale departmental store. And that, that, that has kind of impacted my training now. One of the areas that I... I train on um, heavily is on customer service mm. because I was trained by the British and literally used to serve royalty, really, mm. because I was in this in the China department of an upscale departmental store comparable to you know Nordstrom or something mm. like that, you know, and um, the it's a status symbol for the British. Your China, mm. you know. So, um, yeah, so I, I went to college and studied law and um, began my legal career also in the UK. Worked for a, a few years um, before I went back to Nigeria to um, continue with my legal education and career. And what did you do? As, were you a lawyer? Yes, and... yes, a corporate lawyer. Wow. Went into corporate law and began to practice corporate law also in Nigeria and um, was the head of um, corporate affairs for a financial securities firm in wow. Lagos and before I moved here with my family. So, so you married in Nigeria. In Nigeria, yes. and then you brought your family over here. Yes, well, my, my husband and I, came, husband over and I came over here. I, I didn't then... have a family then, but my family, um, we began here. Wow. And so my two sons were born here. They've never been to Nigeria. Really? Yes. How old are yes. they now? They're 12 and 11. 12 and 11. Yes. Well, do you think you'll ever bring them to Nigeria? Oh, absolutely. Okay, of good. Of course. All oh, right. yes. Great. Please. Yes. Great. Oh, yes. So you I and your husband to. came to the United States. Yes. So you started your family here. And you did not continue your legal career, though. <laughs> no. So what did, what did you do with it? You're just like, ah, I'm, I know, I'm done. No, no, I'm done. Yes. Yeah, I'm done. You know, the process of going through what I went through with my life story, losing my mother, not having any strong you know, female figures, mentors, and mm. presence in my life kind of, you know, created this, um, you know, a, a passion. I, I saw a need because I, I saw, I felt a need personally, mm -hmm. you know, and I still do. It's amazing at whatever age and whatever stage you are in yeah. life, yeah. you always still need that, someone that's over you, someone that's doing what you like to do, right. someone that has achieved what you'd like to achieve, to kind of be a mentor and really Absolutely. be in your life and speak into your life. And so uh, I was deprived of that. I just mm -hmm. never found it. And, and then I look back and, um, you know, seeing that there are many, many, many girls, you know, today who are in my shoes. Not that they may have lost a parent or, or, or not. It may just be because you know, um, they are not growing up in, you know, mother, father, right. they, 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 the family kind of thing is dysfunctional. Right. And they just need that presence. Or, or they just need someone other than their parent because they're not listening anyway. <laughs> they're not listening to mom and right. they think, you know, to reinforce and to model what it is to be a woman, 
to them. And so that kind of just birth, that experience, going through that personal pain of mine and just praying and all that just gave me that passion and hunger to want to empower other women and, uh, and, 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 and give back. And support them. And and with become, that, you started yes, a ministry. Absolutely. Water yeah. Garden Ministries. Yes, Tell I did. That. I did. And that's I felt, that's phenomenal. I, I, yeah, thank you. No, thank I, you. I, I, yeah, I have to stop here. Yeah. To think about it, we all go through things and we all want to help other people, but to actually stop yes. yourself and start something that will help so many other people, I, I commend you for that. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you. It's, it's just, it's about turning your pain to power. Mm -hmm. That's that's how I put it. It's mm -hmm. about turning your pain to power and coming to a, a place of understanding where your mess is actually your message, message yeah. and your test is your testimony yep. and coming to realize that you're, you, you, were, you were destined or allowed mm -hmm. to go through all of that, not really mm -hmm. for you, but to position you and put you in a place where you can in turn minister. Amen. And, and, and be a blessing to others, you know. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't wasted. All of that wasn't wasted. At the end of the day, it created that passion, that empathy for me to want to really reach out and, and particularly girls and women and just be there for them and, and encourage them and empower them and, and offer them hope mm. and let them know that they can make it through. You know, if I came through, you can too. And so um, I felt that America was the place for me. It was a place. It was a place. It's about place and timing and location and calling. It was the place that I was to begin this mission of mine. And so I founded a ministry. And uh, with Water Garden Ministries, I found I wasn't really reaching as many women as I'd like to. Mm. Um, you know, it was more focused on community outreach to the homeless in the inner city, which is fine. But what about the suburban woman? What about the working woman? What about the young girl yeah. in college that comes from what appears to be a okay family? You know, you know, because when it comes to socioeconomically, it wasn't like I was deprived. Right. You know, I right. had all the things that money could buy. But it was more than that that right. I needed. So what about those? I found I wasn't reaching them, and um, you know, I, 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 after much prayer, you know, knowing me as a woman of faith, um, pray a lot about my issues. I felt led to begin royal proclamations mm. because now I'm taking my business law background, I'm taking my professional background, my experience in the marketplace. As, um, as, uh, as a senior management level, you know, leader in, in the marketplace. I'm taking all of that and rolling it into something to empower the business woman, the working mm. woman, the professional young girl, the up and coming professional girl or woman, you know. And so I found at Royal Proclamations um, seven years ago, five, seven years ago now. Mm -hmm. And um, the mission really is still the same. The same mission is about reaching out and really empowering people. Um, the, my audience now is broader because it includes men as well yeah. in the marketplace. But I have a special program because my heart is always with the girls and with the women, um, a special program that's really targeted and focused on girls and young women. And, and that's a total woman conference, you know. So that's how I, I came into that because... For me, the true empowerment has to be holistic. Mm. It has to be spirit, soul, body, mind. You have to capture all spheres of a woman's life and address those issues, you know, because emotional issues impact the professional issues and the financial issues, and everything is kind of related mm. and integrated. Mm. Yes, because while I was going through my emotional issues, it was showing up in other areas <laughs> of my life. Women. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, the Total Woman Conference, the whole concept is the total woman, the whole woman, the spirit, soul, body part. That program is really kind of focused on them to empower them in all spheres of their life and um, to really represent to them um, the possibilities mm. and to share the message of hope and, 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 and power and empowerment with them and motivate them to make those right choices and just be there for them 
when they are going through or whatever they're mm. going through. Yeah. What I find so awesome about this story is although you're not practicing law now or yes. doing all the things you once thought you may have been doing in the future, yes. all of that is a seed for what's to come. All of that helps build who you are. People see Princess Bola, Royal Proclamations, but, but what's really behind that? And I yes. think everything that we go through, whether you're 18 right now yes. or you're 30 or 50 or 60, whatever age you are, we all have these explorations and these places that we go to and it's not a waste of time. Oh, and I, 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 I yes, hurt when I hear absolutely. people say, oh, that was a waste of last year yeah. working for them. But it's not. No, even, no. even when you're doing something that may not feel like you're making a difference, that's a time to reflect. Yeah. Right? So you have all these different situations. And like we said earlier, you took the good from exactly. everyone. And that exactly. helped you create who you were. And it also helped you create Total Woman Conference. Absolutely. Which absolutely. is coming up. Yeah, exactly. And we want to talk about that. Yes, we want to talk about that. Total Woman Conference for girls and young women. There are two Total Woman Conferences that Royal Proclamations well, Tell us first, where did you get Total every, Woman? Where, where did that come from? Just from the whole concept of the whole woman. Mm. And I go by Total Success. Total Success. Coach as well. You know, for me, it has to be total. It has to be complete. Nothing missing, nothing broken. It has to encapture all spheres of your life. Mm. It can't be just focused on one area, on business mm. only or on, on faith or spirituality only, totally. or on health. Everything. It has to capture and encapsulate all of the aspects of a woman's life. So that's how I came up with the total woman, the whole woman. So what know? happens and at so the total at the woman woman woman, It's a care conference. We call it a one-day conference to care, C-A-R-E, and the acronym stands for Celebrate, Applaud, Refresh, and Equip. You know, so it's to care for girls because I, I felt I was lacking care mm. and I want to care for girls and women. And so the one that's for women, girls and young women, it's always in the fall. Mm -hmm. And the one for the old, older women, more mature women, is in the spring. Mm -hmm. So the one in the fall is on Saturday, October 22nd, 2011 mm -hmm. at the Capital Community College on 9050 Main Street in Hartford, Connecticut. And we pull from all over the region, actually. People travel from far, excuse me, from far and wide to, to hear the message, to attend the conference. And, um, you know, that is why my vision kind of broadened mm. because I thought this message is a global one. This need is a global one. And so really kind of enlarging my, my vision to include now um, um, you know, regional conferences and taking this whole total woman conference on the road. And this is going and to just, be life-changing conference. Yeah, life-changing. And of course, you're the keynote speaker and you, they would get to hear your own story, your own compelling mm -hmm. life story because every woman has a story. Every woman. Yes, and you have an amazing story as well and you're going to be the keynote speaker. And we have other dynamic speakers, experts in different areas, empowering resources. Yes. We have a beauty makeover, fashion presentation, you know, raffling off by our sponsors, Lord & Taylor, mm. a lot of cosmetics and gift items. I mean, it's just a blast. We deliver it in a way that's appealing to younger, the younger generation, mm -hmm. but our message is consistent and powerful. And it's going to be so powerful. It, it, so many women are going to leave there yes, telling other people about it. Exactly. It's, yeah, transformed. Yes. So... Where do people buy their tickets? Web website, totalwomanconference.com. And there are other ways in which people can be involved. You know, they can start, join this social movement on mm. Facebook where there is Total Woman Conference. Just like the page, support it. If you can't come, you can sponsor someone. You can gift someone that experience. You know, go to the website, totalwomanconference.com. And um, it's all there. Yep. And I really look forward to people participating in this movement is yes. revolutionary, it's life-changing, it's empowering, and it's designed specially to care for girls and women in all spheres of their lives. So very, very exciting and looking forward to their involvement and support. Yeah. Totalwomanconference.com. We are so excited to see you on October 22nd. That's a Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Princess Bola, thank you so much for opening up your life story to all of us. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jackie. You are thank an inspiring you. woman on Inspired Success. <laughs>
Thank, Thank you, you, Jackie. Thank you.